que o que nós vamos tentar fazer hoje aqui é os estudantes aqui nas escalas. Um, tive muito tempo fora, voltei e nos últimos anos tenho, ou seja, tô, apesar de ter estudado design industrial e de produto, uh, sempre tive muito relacionado com as tecnologias. Pronto. E nos últimos tempos, né, com, com curiosidade, uma série de outros fatores, comecei a me interessar por todo este tema da, 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 da capital arte, do blockchain. Basicamente, o que nós vamos tentar fazer aqui hoje. Eu trouxe um grupo de pessoas, que são pessoas que eu conheço e que conheci neste, ao longo deste tempo, não é? Que eu comecei a me introduzir nesta área. Bem, aqui o, o, está aqui o Raul, que é, que é espanhol e que trabalha, que é um artista digital nativo, não? Sim, é um pouco assim. E, e pronto, que basicamente foi uma das pessoas que mais me influenciou e que mais me explicou todo este tema, foi um bocado que me não abduziu para o tema, mas pronto, foi a pessoa que, que primeiro me a explicar do que é que se tratava isto. A ideia é ele explicar-nos um bocadinho dos conceitos gerais, não é? um caso quase como, como ele me explicou a mim, que é aquelas ideias gerais para que se comece a entender um bocadinho do, do que é que se trata. Não é? Depois temos aqui o Ilan, que vale, se ele percebe algumas coisas de português, o Ilan é americano, que vive na Alemanha, em Berlim, Uh, fez parte de um grupo, dos primeiros grupos de pessoas que começaram a trabalhar isto em, a nível da, da criptoarte e acho que é uma sorte para nós, um privilégio, que devemos ter hoje aqui o Milan, que ele nos explica um bocadinho, porque acho que ele faz parte do grupo de pessoas que está um pouco pela, pela alma mata, basicamente, de todo este, de todo este, este movimento, que foi tudo muito rápido e aconteceram muitas coisas ao mesmo tempo. Depois temos aqui a Yasmin, que é galerista, que tem uma galeria em Barcelona e que tem trabalhado, portanto, começou a introduzir todo este tema dos NFTs e da criptoarte na sua galeria e vai-nos dar um pouco a visão dela do que é que ela acha, como é que ela está a nível de galeria de artes, como é que estão a gerir os colecionadores, isso tudo. E depois, por último, temos aqui o Nico, que é o meu colega do projeto que eu tenho, que não é propriamente um grande fanático da, de todo este tema da tecnologia, mas que eu também acho que, que é uma pessoa mais da prática, mas que eu acho que a visão dele é interessante porque, apesar, ou seja, porque não precisamos de admirar uma coisa para poder interessar-nos por ela. E acho que neste caso o Nico tem uma visão própria, não é? De uma pessoa que trabalha mais o material, que vem da escultura, que vem do produto. Mas o que, é que ele, o que é que ele acha em relação a isto? E pronto, e será um bocadinho que vamos fazendo. Um, se vocês depois tiverem perguntas no final, estão à vontade. Portanto, nós vamos começar. Muito, há pessoas que preferem fazer em, em inglês, outras em espanhol. Uh, eu acho que os dois idiomas é o que se sentirem mais confortáveis, não? Raul. Ok. Ah. Uh, welcome. Uh, so. I'm gonna try to explain you what is Web3, okay? Uh, so first, <coughs> we have the Web1 was all about reading. Uh, people would create websites, uh, blogs, etc. And you would go to these sites and you would read information. It was a revolution on the distribution of information. Then it came the web 2.0, which was the revolution of social media. So it's like read, write, but now we have a new iteration in, in internet, in web, which is called web 3. And web 3 is all about own, ownership, okay? Uh, thanks to blockchain technology, this new iteration of the, of the World Wide Web allow us to, uh, to resolve a, a problem that uh, it was not resolved until this moment, which is digital ownership. It's very clear, I mean, if I hold this in the real world, you would say, yes, it's his water, it's my water. I'm just holding the water, it's mine. Yeah. But in the digital world, this is very comp 
was very complicated. But thanks to blockchain technology, uh, now we can enjoy digital ownership. Uh, what is a blockchain? A blockchain is a is a massive, is a big database with information. It's an accounting book uh, that lives uh, across a lot of computers in a decentralized network of computers. Um, Okay, so the first blockchain was uh, Bitcoin in the context of the aftermath of the 2008 crisis. Uh, a year after, uh, this, this persona, Satoshi Nakamoto, developed this idea of creating Bitcoin uh, as a response to, to, the, <coughs> to the 2008 crisis. Uh, the idea was let's create let's create a, a coin that is not uh, controlled by central banks by governments why because central banks and governments uh, basically are not very faithful uh, there is a lot of shady operations uh, in the way they uh, print money, they can they can print a lot of money out of thinner. How they do this? Creating debt. Basically, all the money that uh, is created in the world is debt. Uh, debt that is issued uh, by central banks and is uh, distributed in, into, into the public as, as loans, as mortgages, as deuda externa, uh, okay? Um, so, blockchain, uh, Bitcoin, was created only to operate with coins, with Bitcoins. It's a way of uh, just it's just for money, okay? But then um, some people uh, started to develop uh, something called uh, layer tools. Some layers that uh, work on top of the main layer, and this layer, these new layers, uh, allows you to. Uh, run little uh, pieces of code, of software, and serve some purposes. Uh, one of these layer tools in Bitcoin was a uh, counterparty. In counterparty, uh, counterparty was originally uh, created to allow decentralized finance. But at the same time, some people uh, they created uh, digital art, uh, art collectibles uh, that were running into this layer two counterparty. Um, that was uh, the explosion of NFTs. What is an NFT? An NFT is a non fungible token. A coin, a Bitcoin, is fungible because one Bitcoin is exactly as another Bitcoin. Uh, but these digital assets, non-fungible tokens, they are different from each other. It, they can represent several, uh, a lot of things, different things. Mm. So they use uh, these proto-NFTs, proto-non-fungible tokens, to create a uh, rare purpose. Uh, you probably know the, the meme Pepe, Pepe the Frog. So they created all these collectibles, all these cards, trading cards that uh, were traded in this layer two in Bitcoin in counterparty. That is, that is basically the explosion of uh, NFTs, crypto art. 
these rare pepes. At, at that time, uh, there was this uh, Russian guy, Vitalik Buterin. He was also working on layer twos on Bitcoin. And at some point, uh, he had an idea. Why, if we do, uh, let's do, uh, let's create a new blockchain that is <coughs> that is uh, multi-purpose. Just right from the beginning, not a, a blockchain that can run uh, software. So that was the basic idea for Ethereum. Ethereum is the second main uh, blockchain and currency. And in Ethereum, uh, actually, uh, there wasn't a standard in the very beginning for non-fungible tokens. But uh, like in, I don't know, like in the first two years, they developed a standard for NFTs. Uh, coins in Ethereum are the RC20 standard. Uh, and, and then they developed several standards for NFTs. The first one was RC... ERC20. ERC... No, 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 it's a 721, uh, okay? That's the first standard for uh, non-fungible tokens in Ethereum. And then uh, after that, it came another standard, which was the ERC1155. This other standard uh, allows an addition, <coughs> an addition of the, the same token is split in several parts, okay? Mm, it's like an edition of uh, silk rings. It's like a graphic edition, okay? You can have an edition of 20 of the same graphic uh, artwork. Um, recently, uh, in Ethereum, what we have now is an explosion of layer tubes in Ethereum. These are layers that work uh, using the main layer, but they work uh, on top of it. They <coughs> benefit from the security of the main layer, but actually they are very efficient, these new layer tubes. Uh, and they are very economic to use because the layer, the main layer, is is very busy and it's very it's become very expensive to use the main layer. So now NFT marketplaces are starting to work in these layer tools of Ethereum. So this is a, a very simple explanation of what is. NFTs, crypto art, what is blockchain, what is web three, and um, yeah, it's, I hope uh, you understand more or less what I was talking about. You can ask questions, and um, I think uh, Ilan will continue from here. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, first question is, how many people understood what he just said? And. Pretty good, great. How many people here, you, you all know what crypto is? Crypto in general, right? Yes? Yes? How many people uh, have any crypto? Four people, right? Five people, five people. Uh, how many people use MetaMask? Me MetaMask. Do, how many people know what MetaMask is? MetaMask. MetaMask, okay. How many people know what Temple Wallet is? It's pretty good. Uh, how many people have Tezos? Do, do, how many people know what Tezos is? No? No? Okay. All right. <laughs> um, oh, God. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, I guess I'll just kind of give you my, my own journey, um, kind of, uh, Jason Bailey, 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 crypto, art, um, uh, okay, I'll start with myself, so, um, this is hopefully me. The website, the internet is really slow here. So uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a artist. It's kind of my son, my work. Um, I was always interested in drawing, and um, when I was in art school, I studied in New York, and um, I started studying painting. And I, I really hate watching paint dry. <laughs> Very slow. Paint, wait, paint, wait, and I liked. I wanted. I wanted to move faster. I wanted to be able to change things quickly and and see things quickly, and I wanted things faster. <laughs> and um, I learned about computer art, and changed my major in in my school from com from painting to computer art. And I I uh, found out that you could. You could use something like Photoshop and very quickly make things, uh, very quickly. Um, and also that you could actually, uh, Photoshop as you know, you just move things and turn layers off and on and it's ma mainly for making images. But then I learned you could do video on a computer too and that uh, I could make images move, I could animate with the computer too. And I also learned that I could c code create code, like write actual words on a text that would tell the computer what to do. And this was very interesting for me. Um, and so uh, I, I really like this kind of technology combination. Um, and also <coughs> the, the ephemeral, I fi find computer work to be very somewhat ephemeral. And at the same, so at, as I finished, the internet became, when I was in art school, the internet became very big the web and all this stuff and we, we all wrote web pages and oh I can access a web page in Korea that was very exciting like that I could grab something from somewhere else in the world and it was right in front of my like the screen like right, well not there but screen like this. so um, so that that was very for me that it was always this kind of like searching for interesting new things that the computer could do um, then I got, at some point I realized that you could do live, I did, wanted to do video, so I did motion graphics, video stuff for jobs, and then I found a company that was making live video software, VJing. How many people know what VJing is here? That's pretty good. VJing? These guys, the young men. You, VJing? No? No. Okay. No, that's, that's how old I am. Um, so I, I, uh, I, uh, uh, I was doing this and for many years I worked for a company make, you know, helping with teach VJ software and, 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 and live video, then video mapping came along and we were doing video mapping and, and uh, then I was dead, stopped. Um, uh, and I met this person. Um, who was Brazilian, actually, uh, who was interested in, oh, this is not it. It's very hard to do a presentation when the internet is not working. Coinspiration.org, yes. That's how good I am that I remember actually the whole thing. Um, who was interested in, in um, money in relationship to art. So people, working in, in the arts who are also using money in their art as part of their art. <coughs> and uh, this person is, has this site, it's called Coinspiration, and, um, and we were playing with ideas of money. And Bitcoin was already around, and I was interested in it, but it didn't really, it was very inaccessible for me. So this person eventually um, uh, became my wife. Um, <laughs> And uh, we became involved with a, uh, a collective called Dada.art, which um, started out as a, uh, 
a collaborative platform for people to draw together. So you go on the website, it's going to show up soon, and you make a drawing, and then someone responds to your drawing. And then you have a whole visual conversation. And this company, they were, when they, they started, they didn't have the idea, they didn't know what blockchain was, they didn't know anything of this, about this kind of thing. They, uh, but then when they found out about it, they realized they could, they could have, they could sell the, go, no. <laughs> They realized they could, they could, they, they realized that they could use blockchain and this Ethereum network to create tokens from the art and then sell that art on the internet, these collectibles, collectible artworks, uh, and then support the artists who contribute to the platform. And that's what this is, this is da-da-da art. Unfortunately, I don't have my account on here and I can't show you, but if you logged into this website, you would see a, a drawing application, and then it would invite you to draw, and then someone would respond to you. And, and so this, is, this was a whole very large community. Uh, it's a very, it, it, well, it was a very large community um, of artists working collaboratively. And uh, um, my, my friend, or white partner, whatever you want to call it, she, she was invited to consult on how they should move forward with, um, with this project. Uh, data. And because I'm an artist and because I'm curious, something ha someone invited me to become part of a company, a uh, uh, testing called Maker's Place, right? Maker's Place .com. Makerspace.com. Yeah, co, yeah. Uh, I can't find the server, that's good. <laughs> Maker's. Makerspace.com. Yeah, place. It's .co, I think. I was on a, another uh, social media site, I can't remember the name of it. And they found me, they had, happened to have a lot of followers, and they said, oh, we invite you to be a beta, beta do you know what beta testing is? Beta? So they invited me to be a beta tester on this new website that, uh, where they, they explained to me we're gonna sell digital, limited edition or authentic digital art. So I said, I asked my wife at the time, do you think this is all right? And she said, looks interesting. Here, I'll help you set up a wallet, and I created, my first digital artworks there, and so, and I, I looked around in other sites that also did this. One of them was called Super Rare. Um, and uh, and I, I, I applied and I got into this, and then uh, there were other ones that I applied for, and uh, using this MetaMask with the, what he was referring to as Ethereum, okay? And uh, I sold some artwork, and uh, I could take the money and go and buy food. <laughs> and this was to me very like, wow, you know, because like, usually you you uh, you go you take our artwork and you go to a street or you sell it in a uh, you go to a gallery or you I don't know put it on the internet somewhere. Maybe someone buys, they see it, they buy it on the internet, or you make t-shirts of your artwork and you sell it this way. There was always an answer for how to sell, but to just, this idea that you could, up until that moment for me, making artwork that was digital and just putting on a website, maybe you make an installation, you do some projections, but, oh, but basically the image itself was, did, had no value, no value. No one cared, right? It was just a JPEG on a website. Anybody can have a JPEG on a website. Like I couldn't, like I couldn't have this drawing, this artwork here, for example, which I made on my iPad, which is uh, part of a series called Make It Beautiful. Like this, like if I put this there, this would just live there. It couldn't live in it. I could print it out and sell it, right? But it, it, in and of itself, it was nothing, zero. With this technology, I could make this thing, put it on a website, and it would sell. And, and I could go and buy food. This was, this is like, explosion in my mind, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so so that, that for me is like, for me and many other artists, this was a big thing, right? Yes. Question, question, yes, yes. I, for you, I, I give you, I'll give you a sticker just for, for, just for asking a question. Okay, so 
question. Good question. Good question. Well, it's more than a certificate. Okay. Um, so how does it work? You have a website. You have your wallet. You have a platform that is for NFTs. You connect your wallet and you sign to the, to the website and it says to the blockchain, this person now can create what we call a token, a non-fungible token. So it's not a currency, it doesn't, it's not like one unit, one dollar, it's just a, a, it's its own little unique little thing and that the blockchain says this, this thing, this, this piece of wood, I've said now that this piece of wood is now associated with this string of numbers that is, and it, when it writes it, it's permanent. It can't be changed because it's cryptography. And what actually happens is that to validate that, there are say 500 computers that say, oh yes, this is okay, this is correct, 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 this is correct. Okay, we've had, a, you need a certain amount of computers to say this is correct. So then you have that number, right? But what the, what, the, what the platform does is it says this hash, this number, it points to an image on a server. And it's on the, the image is on a, actually a global server, not really, but. That's not that image, it's another version of that image. Because this image, no, because this is just sitting on my website, I think. But there is an, another place, it's a, there's several different versions of this, but the one that we usually refer to, Shut up! Air condition? No. no, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it. No, 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 no. I can, I can see they're done. Um, it's, a, uh, it's called, it's, it's similar in, in a way to the blockchain, it's called IPFS. So it's a global hard drive where people can, what they call, pin an image. And, and so that token refers to that image. And that's it. That's all it is. I don't know. Maybe it does. But look, um, there was uh, these. I just thought, these. I just accessed from my website. But if you go to the platform where I sold where I sold this image, that image is either cached or it's, it is stored on the IPFS. So it, it, as long as that IPFS server is running, it will always point to that. The token will always point to that image as being associated with that token. And if there, are, if there are additions of it, they all point to that one image. But the token is the art. And actually the image, when you upload the image to this special server, uh, is digitally signed yeah. with cryptography. Yeah. That means that it's a unique digital file. There is no way you can, it's, a, it's unique, it's a unique digital file, which is actually what I was saying is that resolves the problem of how to sell something that is digital. You, ha you have to create a unique digital file. So, Okay, what is an image? What is a digital file? It's an string, <coughs> or, it's an string of zeros and ones. It's information, bytes, right? Um, but there is also metadata in a digital file. The metadata says this, <coughs> this uh, image of a cat was created uh, el 1 de febrero de 1922 5, 25 de la tarde. So, with cryptography, what, what you do is uh, you insert a hash, it's a string of uh, number of <coughs> letters, that uh, when, you, when you pass your digital file uh, sign by an algorithm, it will give you this hash the sequence of letters and numbers, that is the link between the file and the information that is stored on the blockchain, okay? Um, that is unique. Uh, 
you cannot do uh, you, you just uh, change one bit of information in a digital file just one bit it will give you when you pass through this algorithm it will give you a completely different string of letters and numbers mm -hmm. okay It's a way of signing a digital file, of making a digital file, file unique. But did uh, you decide if that art is unique or uh, how, do you, how do you, when you, when you sell art, do you define that art is unique and then, and then there's, there's a token that it says that uh, that art is unique? So, what Dylan was explaining is that uh, when you use uh, a blockchain, when you use a, a, a wallet on Ethereum, uh, your wallet, <coughs> your wallet is you. You are your wallet. Dylan uh, Katin is the wallet zero uh, x uh, and, and another sequence of numbers and letters. And that is the <coughs> only Dylan Cathy has this wallet. Uh, if he mints uh, an NFT with his wallet, is uh, is the certificate? Is the certi is, uh, is a certificate of authentic authentication. It's a certificate of this piece was created by the artist. And the information that is stored on the blockchain would also say if this NFT later is sold um, and resold several times, you will have a store on the blockchain, uh, this wallet, bought this NFT in this day or one ether then it goes sold uh, to another wallet and everything. So actually there is no, you cannot, uh, you cannot change the blockchain. So the blockchain is, provides uh, immutability. Uh, there is no, there is no control set in the blockchain. That is the thing that I was.
the big that's the big difference between between that's the one really huge difference between like uh, physical art ownership and digital art ownership in physical art ownership you buy a painting it sits in your house or it is stored somewhere and with nfts anybody can access it but you do you exclusively own it only you unless it's additions that's the big difference really big difference actually you know there's a lot of things in this technology that you kind of sometimes look at it's you're either completely confused and bewildered or, or you're like, you're just kind of like, go, you go like, meh. But if you really think about it, the, these small differences, the, the ability of the artist to put their work for sale on a website somewhere, and the money goes directly to them, that's <coughs> big, it, because it's digital, and before that you couldn't do that. And then the ownership being just more of a symbol, symbolic, but, but solid technology, you can't change that information. Those two things, and that the fact that anybody can access that art, you know. And it's really strange, like for me, but I, I collect art as well. Like most, a lot of people who are NFT artists, or NFT, we can go into definitions of that, I can I'll be more specific in a moment, but, but the, the idea that, uh, that, you know, it's so actually accessible too. Like, before I wasn't really collecting much art. Maybe someone would gift me one or a trade. We would trade physical art, but but because you suddenly have money, and you see other artists who are making digital art NFTs, and you can just click. Now I could just look at the art and just go, oh, that's nice. But there's something really powerful when you say, I want this, and you click a button, and then the thing comes up, and and then it's yours. That's like weird, and you, you feel it. it. It it reduces it. That thing that you we, you did maybe before. I mean, for me, if I bought a piece of artwork, it was always really special for me. It was a connection. Like I, I tend to buy artwork by people that I kind of follow and know, so it's a relationship, and they they can acknowledge that I've collected it, right? Because they know me, see me doing it. There's a connection. You know, and it's, 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 for me, it's personal, right? And that's, that's also a big difference, you know? So you do, it does have meaning. It really does have meaning. Like, and we all, these are, we are meaning-making machines. This is, the, all of this has meaning for someone. I mean, this is also a philosophical thing in the end for a lot of people, at least for me, I, I take it to the philosophical level always. Uh... Like it's it's about like um, you know, this is like you were saying this is a glass of water right but actually in Buddhism they've done a lot of thinking about this for many 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 years uh, it's nothing in of itself it's nothing if you and a, a fly goes by this and goes mm? <laughs> doesn't care you know but we're meaning making machines so this. This has a lot of meaning. This has many different things. It means things to many different people, you know. Um, it was created by people, conceived of by people. All this whole place, everything, most of what we are surrounded by, except for the trees outside, which maybe people put planted out there, are, 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 are by us. And, and we all, by being here, we all hold together this moment. Like, someone else, some guy comes off the tree, street, you know, smoking a joint, he's like, Whoa, people in a room. What the hell is going on here? You know, there's no clue. But we're all in this moment, sharing this moment together, and we're holding space. And, and this world of uh, making it beautiful, or Dada art, or make a space, we are all, we're all holding this story together. This money is a story. It's a story we tell ourselves what is real, right? If I say to you, give you $20. It's a, it's a piece of paper that has a number on it, but in another, from, if an alien from outer space comes, they think you're nuts. <laughs> what, they're giving away little pieces of number and exchanging it for food? What, what, is, you know, what is that? So for me, these, these things come to very they, I, profound, profound questions. They am, open up profound questions for me. Because what is feeling? What is that? But I press a button on a web page and I, and I suddenly own artwork that's digital that everybody can see I don't have I can't destroy I can destroy it if I want but why would I it's, I have a feeling for it
because it, it brings down to the essence of why we collect art. Prisons puts that into very, very strong terms, the question, what is art? Why we, why we make it and why we <coughs> consume it, what it does to us, what is the feeling? Very profound questions for me. This, is, this technology, for me, brings that closer. And also because it's financial, right? So this, those are very powerful concepts. You know? I don't know where else to go with this. Um, the the, um, the uh, crypto art world moves very quickly and changes rapidly. It's, it's a constant uh, daily struggle <laughs> to understand what's going on. Uh, I recommend, um, I can, Twitter up until, up until th three months ago, Twitter was the most important place for people to promote and share and, uh, and look for crypto art, art by crypto artists, etc. In the last uh, three months, uh, and, and we were, a lot of people were very upset about this because of Elon Musk and his... <laughs> <laughs> and so um, uh, there's a new uh, what we call so one of the things that's really important one of the important concepts about blockchain is it's decentralized because all of these machines are validating things right uh, no one can really control it really like not one person can control it. that's the whole point so that's what the, the key word in, in, uh, in crypto art is decentralization in crypto in general, is decentralization. So now there is a, uh, 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 a new platform called Warpcast, and, and this is in the last two months. It's a new protocol that is being created. It's called, the protocol is called Farcaster. It's a protocol for social media on Ethereum. Yeah. And in this protocol, you have several applications. It's that a, equals so, somehow one equals to Twitter, more or less. Another equals to TikTok. Another to another are new things. Mm -hmm. And so this is Warpcast, and I can't show you what goes on there. But one of the big differences in, in Warpcast is is that you, instead of it being just Twitter random whatever, they have channels, and each channel has has a topic, and you can join that and follow that channel. You can contribute to it as you want to see fit. I have a channel. That I um, I'm not in, I didn't it's not mine, but there's a channel called Assholes, and we all do asshole things to each other because everybody is generally very positive in, in the crypto world. We say, yeah, we are art, we're too cool, man, cool, man. and then someone said some Russian guy, of course, a Russian guy, who's a nice guy, he's not, he's an artist, uh, uh, who's living in Berlin. He's, a, he's actually I've met him in the person, and he wrote on he we don't tweet on Warpcast, we cast on Warpcast. And he had a cast that said, we need, we need a channel that's dedicated to people who want to be assholes to each other because there's too much positivity. You know? so, so we created assholes. But there's other, group, other, other channels. And one of the things, so there's a lot of attraction now because it was started by, by the crypto community as a solution to, as an answer to Twitter. And um, it's very open. So you can, you know, Twitter used to be open. There used to be people who could develop different versions of Twitter. And, and then they closed it. Even before Elon was there, it was already going because they closed it. And Warpcast is open. And people are developing all these different little applications to, to interact with them, so we can interact with one another in meaningful ways. Um, so just to step back for a second, there's a thing called, there's a, there are non-fungible tokens. There are fungible tokens. They're just tokens. They're just like money, right? And there's many of them. So there's Ethereum is the big one. Deep Bitcoin is the biggest. Ethereum is the second biggest. And then there are other ones. And there, there are actually even separate blockchains, completely separate blockchains out there. So Solana is a completely separate blockchain. Tezos is a completely different blockchain. And in each of these blockchains, you can create sub-tokens. This is what he's talking about, layer two and layer three. And they're just tokens that people create. So there's, for example, something now called DGEN token. And DGEN is short for degenerate. And a degenerate is someone like me now, who has lots of crypto and does crazy things with it all the time and doesn't do much else. So uh, they have a token called DGEN. And what you can do is you can tip someone in, the, in a comment if they've done a nice artwork 
or they've written something smart, or they've done something utterly stupid, and you want to help them because they're pathetic, and you write, you know, 20 number sign DGEN. And this is real money. Not much money, but it's real money. And this is how we now can tip each other to show we appreciate. And that has, just like you press that button, you buy that art, this also has meaning because it has power. And so that's, this is like the cutting edge kind of, of where we are right now. I just want to show one more thing because uh, if I don't, then Raul will be very upset with me because he loves this very much. Very much. Yes. Very, very much. Yes. He sleeps with it at night. Um, <laughs> Zora. Has anybody any questions before we move on? I'm, I'm going to stop now in a moment. But. Great question. Great question. <laughs> Great question. So I'll I'll say this. This is my this, and I am supposed to write an article about this because I want to. Yeah. Yeah. No. Totally. I I I will give you my so my definition, personal definition is of crypto art is any art that has or refers to or or makes fun of crypto art as in uh, crypto so if you have an artwork that has satoshi on it that's crypto art if you have an artwork that has the ethereum logo i don't care what it looks like that's crypto art if you have a meme that's about something in crypto or about the sec sec meaning the securities and exchange commission then that's crypto art art that's just art that you put on the blockchain, like this, this to, this to me is not crypto art. It's art, and they're using the blockchain and crypto to disseminate it and sell it. That's my that's my clear cut definition. Okay. So so if you if you um, make music, and they have sites where you can you can in this site there yeah. is musicians. Uh, yeah. And if you if you're a musician or or a writer or you know it's, it, you can basically tokenize anything now, and uh, and uh, and that's that's just everything. But crypto art for me really is like this could be crypto art in a way maybe because it's got numbers on it, <laughs> right? But um, uh, but the reason I'm showing you Zora now is because it's kind of like the most cutting edge, so to speak, in, in, this is supposed to be like, Warpcast is Twitter, in crypto world terms, and Zora is like Instagram, in crypto world terms. It's, there are memes that do this. They, they show you like, you know, Twitter, Z uh, Warpcast, uh, Instagram, Zora. That's, that's what people see it as. What's really nice about um, the Zora ecosystem is they support what he was referring to as L2s, level twos. So there are many different L2s on top of Ethereum. Now, just let me clarify this point. Ethereum is one blockchain, very famous, very, has a lot of value. Basic, the basic level first is this, you everything you do is a transaction. And every you do something, it, you charge, they charge you a bit of money and it writes the transaction to the blockchain. But that's the basic level. There's nothing below it. There's only this is just the basic level. And what what um, what they did was they built other blockchains on top, like second level. That's what they call L2. And those are nice because when you so the volume of like the the, the as the price of Ethereum goes up, doing a transaction at that base level is more expensive because it costs more money. So if like if in the morning, the morning it costs like one dollar to do a transaction, and then the price of Ethereum goes up two, three, three, four dollars, that same transaction is four dollars, right? On L2s, uh, they use a different economics. They don't have that same problem, so it's cheaper to to, to do to do things. 
So there's much more, and this was by design. Ethereum, the basic Ethereum, provides the overall security for the entire structure. And then you can build anything you want on top of that, right? So you have Zora, which has their own blockchain. The whole, the whole site has their own level two. And they even have their own currency, which, and then they have another thing next to it, which is called Enjoy. And if you look on here, Enjoy is a way in which people, when they mint the work, they will go click on here and say mint. Well, I won't say I want to mint this piece. And then when I mint, I'm permitted to also enter a comment about the work. Look, it's already prompting me. No, I can't do that now. Sorry, I'm in school. No, no, I can't do it. No, no, thank No. It's very convincing, isn't it? Um, you can comment by writing blah, 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 five, 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 600, whatever, however number you are. Number sign, the dollar sign, enjoy. And then, so the person not only gets, they don't only, not only sell their work to you, they also receive a tip, which has real money value. Right? So that's, that's, in a way, their Warpcast and Zora are very similar and, and, and have similar properties. Okay? So that's where we are now with this world, um, where we are now. Tomorrow, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? So, um, so enjoy it while you have it. That's all I said. Um, that's it. I, uh, any, any, uh, any other questions? No. Any, nothing. Spinning? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. I'll give you a little. I'll give you. I'll give you a little philosophy um, about how I function in this world, right? So I call it. I call anything I have to like, really press my brain to the wall to think about and learn. I call it the wall of frustration, <laughs> right? And every day I get up and I. Some days I don't have the energy, but when I do, I'm ready to scale the wall of frustration. I'll get up and a little bit, a little bit more, you know. And as time passes, that, that first wall gets easier. And then you stand up top of the wall and you look down and you can say, oh, ah, I finally got this part. But then you turn around and there's another wall. And that's a, a life well lived to me. And this, this is why, I mean, and, and now this is very interesting because it's, it's something new every day new to, to learn. I mean, you as a programmer, you know, you, there's never another never another day where you don't have another challenge no matter what how much you've coded you're always going to get in front of that computer and then try to write some code and you're <coughs> like why the f is this not working right and this is very similar and um you feel free to reach out to me and, and uh ask me questions uh, in the future uh if i can answer or i'll find someone answer who can answer your question i i uh i, it, I find it, it's my duty to be there, but I'm not a professor, and I will <laughs> never be a teacher. I like being spontaneous. I don't, can't like put my feet in the concrete of, uh, of the academic system. It just that does not work for me. But I'm I'm a freewheeling person. I'm happy to come anywhere to talk, and anywhere you just say you want to meet me in a bar, I'll be there. You have my, you have my, uh, my commitment. Ooh. Thank you very much. What? What about money? It's all real money. Can you lose money? Of course. I can come over there and hit you in the head and you'll lose money. No. There, there are, this is a very good question, right? There are, there's always a way to lose money, right? So one, one, one way to lose money in this world, this system, is if you're not um, not uh, aware of the scams that are available out there that will drain your wallet. That's one way. Or if you get an email with a link in it, you don't click on it if you can sense that it's not a legitimate uh, operation. Usually, every every crypto art or every NFT platform out there, they usually say very specifically, we never send you an email. We never send you an email. We won't send you an email. They might send you an email notification, but you can usually tell when it's wrong. Okay, if someone says, "Hi, man, I need, you know, 
they start kind of talking to you, you can generally say, like, you can tell it's going to go somewhere bad. And you just, you don't know. Someone offers you lots of... Your work is beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. The moment they say your work is beautiful, just alarm bells should be going off in your, in your mind, okay? The other way you can lose money is if you... Um, I don't want to say if you buy art, you lose money. Because that's ridiculous. Like, you could say, okay, you buy a, a, an NFT and the artist was maybe... The, you know, three weeks ago was the most amazing artist, and then like this, people discover that he was a total asshole, like the castle, and uh, and uh, and then the, the price of his his art goes down. That's not that doesn't happen very often. Um, but uh, but you could. Um, so I would say buying an NFT is not about money, is not about loss, and the people who do think that are are assholes. Um, uh, the, other, the only other way is if you buy a token and speculate on it, and the price, you, the price goes up, and then the price goes down, and the price goes up again, the price goes down. Some tokens stay down after a while. But you can usually tell which tokens are probably going to stay down. <laughs> like, you can tell. Very often, if, if we're just going to get into finance now about buying and selling tokens, that's trading, that's not even art anymore. We're not even talking about art. But that's a, one, a sure way to lose money for sure. But it's not art. It's not art. I, I always see, again, I see investing in an artist. You know, as a teacher, as an art teacher, that that's a worthwhile <laughs> cause. And so, spending money on a piece of on an NFT of an art that you like is, uh, for me, always a plus. Even if the price never goes up, it's about. It's not about that. Right. Any by, other? Yeah, by art that you really like, that you really yeah. appreciate, that. Uh, and you don't care if the value goes up or down. Uh, but if you buy an NFT thinking that you buy something that is horrible, that you think is horrible, but uh, you think uh, is the new high sensation in the market, well, maybe you will make some money. Maybe like in a month you will be able to resell the artwork for double the price or 100 times more money, but it can be also the opposite way. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a different way you have relationship with art, you know? because in the real world you have people buy art only for speculation. It's right. not some kind of ever. Yeah, it's is, not. It's uh, it's it's a. It's not some utopia. So, so let's, let's make, let's make, uh, let's go from far away yeah. from all this philosophy <laughs> and deep stars in the universe. Let's make, let's go uh, back to what's, you know, the let's art, go back to the original. art ecosystem, <laughs> art market, gallery, artist, uh, in this point. Um, my name is Yasmin Rachel. I'm gallerist, but I'm coming from architecture into a design communication design. Uh, I'm also, besides having Fusion Gallery in Barcelona, we are specialized on surrealism, pop surrealism, contemporary surrealism, and urban art, post graffiti, and abstract graffiti. Uh, we are, this is our niche market since many years. We present it in different cities, New York, London, Paris, Luxembourg, Basel in different art fairs um, and coming from basically painting, sculpture, classical, illustrative art. Uh, I'm also co-founder together with Raul, Betty Bigas and Oscar Sivit, which are not here now, of the NFT Festival of Barcelona, which we initiated 2022 and it was one of the first NFT festivals in Europe. We had the chance to do it there in the Royal Artistic Circle in Barcelona. And it was, uh, we did it exactly with this aim. Two people coming from the art world or physical art world and two people coming from the digital art world and uh, from also with the technical skills and put these ecosystems together because we want to use the, the technology basically for really simple things like to provide the provenance, to 
create the ownership and to be able to sell this in this meaning including this in the in the ecosystem of the galleries or the art markets and that the value can stay that you have a stable value that you can resell it and basically from the primary market because the primary market is the artist is the gallery and from there it goes to a secondary market when it goes to speculation auction reselling so our space to act is in the primary market once it's in the secondary market <clears throat> it's not more action time for us to make a market to establish artists uh, it's the only way which can put the secondary market can put down the price of an artist normally art stays or goes up and bad auctions can can result that the artist goes under the quotation so we in the primary market have to take care also of this thing uh, the technology uh, allows us not just to establish the certificate of the provenance of the time of who did it not just this we can also establish um, a royalties that means we can put an intervention in creating this for future activities on the secondary market. So we established in the moment when we create it, we define the edition, we define if it's original or not. Uh, in this moment, we can also define there's such a percentage of realities, <coughs> whatever, how it got said in future, goes back to the written wallet where it was created. Uh, the possibility to certificate the ownership and certificate the artwork into digital artwork, this is revolutionary. And <clears throat> all, even if we are more comfortable, less comfortable with that, we should all see it as a, it's a, it's a normal way just to do a contract. Um, <clears throat> we as a gallery, with the initiation of the NFT festival, invited a lot of visual artists to participate, to generate, to create uh, part of the artwork, maybe animated, maybe in a different form, maybe a video art piece um, or a generative art piece to, to create its uh, artwork and do an exhibition with 38 artists. Uh, this went really well, a lot of experimental things came out. For a lot of people it was the first NFT or the first contact. Raoul was a technical assistant to each of all these artists which were non not coming from the digital art world and also curating digital artists, including them in a royal artistic circle which was founded 150 years ago and it's such classic like it sounds like. And this was also like to bring them in a context or it was a new world <clears throat> and making a bridge between this new world. And that was our aim doing it, or it's still the aim. And now as a gallery, uh, we are including also the digital art, doing it in this way. Um, and now back coming to one point, you pointed out with the sound art or with the sound music. Um, this is also a, it's a type of art, sound art, uh, same like uh, digital art it's immaterial so how to capture something immaterial and something at least certificated digitally or even combinated why why art is, is, is limited to be or just digital since when we are not uh, uh, since when we are not multi uh, disciplinary in art development so why it's not a new way just to accept, integrate in the one. And this can be an expression, visual expression, about sound expression, all these elements. And even physical, you can say this is an NFT in your contract, but you, you get it with a mobile phone. This is nothing without that. If you define it in the contract, it's like that. It's like artists... Even Andy Warhol uh, uh, used digital uh, ways of creating, physical ways of creating, 
I just took a can out of the supermarket. It's it's the the limitation of that. It's it's our proper limitation as creators, or also as galleries. I'm talking also, or even collectors. Why not? Uh, in a especially today's world, we are consuming 90% everything what we do on a digital way. And since how many years cinema exists, since how many years sound exists, it's not, we're not, <coughs> film and sound, we're not, we're not talking about new concepts, we're talking just about new ways to, to accomplish them or integrate them. And uh, as many galleries try to make a gallery in, in metaverse and this works good, Yes, for a crypto world, but still for a person who's, yeah, also our collectors have a lot of doubts. Yeah, but how are I gonna do that? Okay, so we started also to create um, hybrid artworks. We have one artist like Chemi, maybe you can mm -hmm. show him a second. Mm -hmm. um, Chemi is uh, one artist who works completely exclusively with the sound artist, so with the composer. He is, he is uh, every artwork he's painting, he is painting out of inspiration of a proper sound art piece or a live session was doing with artists. Uh, at the moment, the artist is coming, yeah, there's a QR code and it's going to the band camp and that's it. And we said, no, this, this gonna be this a sound art piece will be a NFT will be certified that it's coming exclusively it's paint uh, it's it's the sound of this art piece it belongs there everybody can hear it but it's not the owner so the owner who's gonna buy this artwork he gets for free the NFT it's coming with it it's in the contract the NFT is just a certification of this immaterial part of this complete artwork. In this case, really integrated and even not thought with the idea to do it, but this will be now where we give the NFT together. So we tried different platforms, we worked in Tesos to make it also cheap for the artists to, uh, in, in the NFT festival, to mint them and to onboard them in a, in a more or less user-friendly environment. This is the other problem, and also the security is a big problem. Uh, we as galleries, we cannot expose our clients to insecurity for their money, uh, transactions, if, if they push something wrong or they open the link or <laughs> in the famous mail or <coughs> what, whatever. Um, so we decided to even not do directly basically the transaction on chain we create directly a wallet with the nft inside and you get your access it's the same like that's your account this is inside there's no transaction it's the original packaging made by the gallery it's like your star wars figure has a different price if you have the original packaging or not so, for a collector point of view, when we go back to, to of gadget collection or general uh, collecting part, humans are collectors, they're always collecting parts. So, we have it really naturally in, in our blood. Some more, some less, uh, some more fetish, some more extreme, some more subtle. But uh, collection part is, is part of our memories, is uh, part of uh, putting emotions together in an item and collecting this item. And this item, it's a souvenir, it's saying, you bring something with your emotions from somewhere, it's not the creepy uh, dragon of Gaudi who people bring from Barcelona, or <laughs> like a bad maid even. Uh, no, it's all this emotion which comes with it. So um, this is also, we are really interested to create this platform for especially also art forms, which are, full on the market, distributed since, or created, departments, but how is the ownership? Just a museum can buy an installation. How you sell a performance. How you, how you put something in material or create it. How you 
put it in a, in a packaging, how you, how you put it in a store, and how you create the accessibility of it, and how you create the value of it. Because it's like, hey, yeah, but this is super nice, this film, you know, just copy paste, and now it's, I, I have it on my I hard disk. Yeah, but you're not the owner. Probably you did never pay for it. But the, 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 the action is like, or how we really feel also the, the, the person or satisfy his form of collecting. Like he said, it's a button and you can have it. You can see it, but you want to have it. And this is one part we want also uh, open also the idea for uh, eliminate this 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 uh, borders between this is digital art and this is art or visual art. Visual art is already consumed, and and we are even so standardized that uh, almost all art is squared and the same size on our screens. So this is already a limitation where we go. So let's go a bit further in the sense of um, also in the part of creation, use these tools. It's just a tool. It's not a uh, take off the mythicism. I'm, I'm, I'm not the technically, I, I know what's possible or I ask it, but it's, it's about the concept. It's about the concept and the use and technically, it's still not really user friendly. It's it's still what we call you're with one one place in Mordor. You don't know what happened there or there. You have still this part, but standardizing and convalidating it. It's it's the same way. Like yes, you can lose everything. Yes, your house can burn and your Picasso burns too. And uh, burn that Picasso. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Uh, of course. That's why we have insurance. Sometimes artists do it themselves, so they love to do that. Uh, sometimes you have to protect also the art for their own creators because uh, they like also to burn. You can literally burn what you've made in an NFT. Obviously, when you sold it, it's not yours anymore. You cannot burn it. That's a good thing. Literally, <laughs> That's a good thing. literally like in, a, in, a, in the real world, how to say, many things are just the same. Uh, your bank account is also not really different. There's no one box with all this money in it. Uh, it's a system. It's a so it's digital. Yeah, yeah, digital system. And um, basically, the <clears throat> to bring it back to to really normal scale, everything what's possible in the real world on art, you can translate to a, uh, to to this tools or to this system. The values are the same. What is the artist value? Depends the de demand on the market, depends what the artist, it, he serve. maybe you don't have to sell, but he gives us his price. Uh, it's the art market who make your price, it's the version. So this is valid on the same way. You can be a pop star and a one shot uh, thing, or you can be an artist with a, a long career. And you can create your body of work, you can create documentation, you can even art child. We did, for example, one artwork of Nika Bionica. Can you please, Nika Bionica and, and Alba G. Coral? Please do this. <laughs> <laughs> quick, 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 quick. <laughs> Come on. Uh, for example, um, she made together with Alba Gecoral, who is a generative artist, one of Spanish best, um, did, um, did an art piece which was uh, presented at MACBA, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Barcelona in 2007. Uh, this was a completely generative and sound art piece and presented in a museum. So for the NFT festival, we used this or, or already uh, antique, <laughs> I would say digital antique uh, uh, or archaeologic art piece and uh, luckily you saved it from some hard disk which maybe in some years will not work anymore so we are already really hard in the archaeologic achievement of digital artworks so we did now the nft or two years ago the nft of this artwork 
So it's um, it's also it's a tool who can be used for that things. We we live already 40 years of digital artwork creation. So there's a lot to do and a lot to protect and a lot maybe to give it also ownership or proper ownership or protection with it. Not all artists uh, had a good went through and have foundations taking care of their rights and stuff like that. Uh, there are still some artists who don't have this inspiration and their families, for example, can protect in this way also or the provenance uh, uh, to give it a guarantee. Um, without going too much out that, I just wanted to uh, present a bit the main idea that it's not so far away and it's a tool which should also redevelop in how we use it. We have one power and the idea is that probably some programmers had some idea how artists work is always the best thing. <laughs> uh, artists start to use it in a different way uh, so the utility is in the end it's what we give it to it yes yes it's just an extension it's another it's another tool it's another tool corresponding on on that and the <coughs> financial market it's literally the same you're to, you're in the art market we are talking about uh, monetizing the art it's not like i like this artwork this guy needs 2,000 euros a month to live. Uh, it's not working like that. Uh, artists work really hard, normally charge nothing, work years and years hard. When they come to a point when they start to sell, you say, wow, you sold this painting for 3,000 euros, wow, or 5,000 euros. Yeah, okay, basically you, you, you spend your life in a university, you, you, you work 15 years for free because you like what you're doing, it's not a job, right? And you're training because you're... Uh, so all that, and then you get like, wow, he made just like that. He won a lot of 5,000 euros with it. You say, okay, what's about the last... That's what people sell into because it, it sounds easy. It sounds all easy. And then we're also talking about uh, let's overtake with quality works this platforms. Let's take it. If well, not, it will be taken by bullshitters. They just make that and just make that. Not, no, it's not their territory. Just, you know. Uh, I would argue that there's no such thing as a territory in the crypto, in the crypt, in the blockchain yeah, space. space. It's, it's a not, space. It's not a 2D there's, zone. There's lots of. But I wanted, on. I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm just like, it's a, so I just, le, I just. Yeah. <laughs> just shut up. Yeah. Shut up, Elon. I have a quote. This is defined. This is defined. This is defined by the creator. This is defined by the artist how you want to give that. It's defined. You define as a creator. Is all this is pr my process, my studies is part of the work? No. Yeah, you get the end result, all the models, like I'm coming from architecture, how many studies, drawings, the things you do, it's part of this project. With what? Sorry? The end result of my underlying artwork. Yeah. It only runs But this, for example, if you want to sell as a creator, for example, um, digital creator, and you want to, to sell, like you say, a video art, and you want to, to give the open art chief and, and, and all the documentation that belongs to it, uh, this has to be written in the contract, if you mint it. 
if you mint it. So it's defined. This comes with that, 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 if it's there. If it's, if it's not defined, it's not part of the property. I, did I understand, did I understand it well, or? It's the same, you can write your, you can imagine, my contract. Imagine tu queres criar o teu contrato. Tu tens um contrato ideal para a tua obra. Antes tu tinhas que criar isto. Tinhas um advogado, foi... Pois, aqui dá-lhe a possibilidade de criar esse contrato com o modelo que tu quiseres. Com aquilo que tu consideras que é o valor e o formato da tua obra. É o valor. Pelo valor daquilo que tu ali explicas. Tu podes, por exemplo, dizer ao contrato, dizer assim, eu juntamente este vai o original, que se me enviarem a facilidade, eu posso ir. Ou seja, há muitas pessoas agora que estão a fazer smart contract. Em que a troca oferecem peças físicas. Ou seja, a ideia do smart contract, para mim, na minha opinião, levanta duas coisas que eu acho que é extremamente importante. Uma que, que, que me gostaria agora de falar um bocadinho em castelhano, para poder falar com o Yasmin, que é o que eu creio que é como... Há, por um lado, a relação entre o artista e a galeria, que ha cambiado um pouco, que creio que pode chegar a ser mais justa com o tempo, não? porque a galeria, antes comprava a obra, invertia não. algumas. Se invertia no artista eh... e depois se quedava com a própria. Então, é que é um yeah, não, não, normalmente funciona diferente o que é o modelo de galeria clássica, clássica. não compra arte normalmente representa artistas, eso claro. yo, yo insisto un poco allá porque allá muchos hay, cada uno que abre una tienda ahora pone unas piezas de arte, es una galería, no, una galería tiene un rol muy claro en el mercado de arte, Pero está el artista... representando artistas y representando las piezas de arte. Sí, pero yo puedo como artista decir así, yo como artista... Exacto, porque yo la producción, y esto puede estar en contrato. Exacto, exacto. Nosotros producimos también. Y en el futuro, cuando se vean esto, o sea, yo voy a tener una parte, la galería va a tener otra porque contribuyó con esa porcentaje. Y esto parece mucho más, hasta mucho más un potencial de crecimiento y de justicia autoral para todos. Do que tiene los contratos, tú dices, ah, no, pero esto no tiene validad. Um contrato que fazem em Portugal, se quer mais deixar de não tem validade nenhuma. Portanto, se conseguimos criar uma forma de criar contratos globais, uma forma que é indestrutível, que é teu fusto, que tu que escreveste com as tuas condições, estas são é as condições que tu atribuis àquela peça. Eu acho que isso é muitíssimo interessante. This is what Rowan I like. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it's, it's disturbing. <laughs> That's art should be disturbing. Yeah, but I'm not talking about that. Yes. Please, can you put What? This is now a general discussion. Now. Yeah, I'm. It's a general discussion. Right? Yeah, but I would like to hear. Yeah, if you go to an art gallery and see artwork, it's it's smooth, it's fine with the artwork, it's on the wall. You cannot buy that because it's a pretty film you go to the store, right? You know, what you buy is the fine for the instructions. Okay, you can't get it. That's the instructions. That's it. So the, the question was the same. Because in the, in the market, was talking about uh, like uh, real time uh, this uh, art form. Mm -hmm. This is a very good thing. software and interacting in real time, so it's like site specific. Yeah. You can only go on that kind of conditions. In that computer, you get a piece of code, you get yeah. kind of uh, artwork. Yeah. yeah. So in that case, that seems very to define that you are selling the code in the instruction. I'm saying yeah. like
Yeah, there's a project by a woman, uh, the, um, this couple, uh, D D one, of her, one of the artists' name is DJ Operator, and she has a project where they, they, they recorded dance movements and then they coded those directly on the blockchain. Like, that's how specific they were about using this, me this medium, right? Yes. <clears throat> it's not just digital, though, because you could potentially just write a piece of paper, write up a contract that's legally binding about how you dance a piece of mm -hmm. performance. And, and, this is, and this goes back to, like, music, right? So when Bach wrote it, all of his music, they, had, they didn't have much writing. There was not much of an expression written into the, into the, into the note, notation. But as time went on, like Beethoven, they, they innovated further, and there were very specific instructions as to how, as to how you would perform a piece. And the same thing goes for the art, art world. You, you, you've become more advanced and more specific in what you want. It's just like the law. Like in some pieces of the law, you can only do this and this and this, and the contract in, in the art world is law. It's how we honor the artwork. It's, mm. the, it's the beginning, middle, and the end. It's the frame, the contract of the frame. That it doesn't even have to exist in the material world. Like Yoko Ono pieces, there's like the grapefruit book, famous book, and this is an instruction for how to do a bunch of stuff. And in some cases, those types of works are the artwork. It's the idea. It's and it, and the reputation of the artist allows for this framework to exist. And again, it's all in our minds. And and, and it this is that why I was getting back to this thing about contracts and. What we th how we think and it's all in the mind and and uh, the art world supports this and so in a sense it's the blockchain art is in a way an extension of that idea but m even more law like it's not just down bound by law it's bound by people all agreeing on, a, on computers it's people encoding it and agreeing upon it. So those dance performance moves that these people have now written in the blockchain are written on the blockchain. It's, it's thorough. And, and it's backed up by the fact that people like to collect them. And they have immense value. Each one of these, I think one of these NFTs was going for like, I don't know, $8,000 or something like that. So, you know, it has a value. It's a very distinct value. Sure. Mm -hmm. No. no, it's 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 up to the artist. We yeah. also we also work with pure digital artists, pure digital artists, hybrid artists. We combine sound artists in material with nothing to do with blockchain. Yeah. They they are recordings, field recordings, paisaje sonoro. They make they, but it's it's has to be on a digital format. Yeah. So. We join them or make it or join them together with visual artists who develop together, who explode the boundaries. Uh, we a performative art. Yeah, there's also a way to I can, I can now video straight on. Yeah, here you have the video of the performance, or you can give the artist the digital platforms and maybe also technical possible extra possibility and make a proper artwork out of that. Recuperated from different hybrid elements, and uh, this, I think, this is also the possibilities also give inspiring to artists. So when you have conceptual artist starts just from the glass. So what's about when I turn around this glass? What actually it looks like a a bow, you know, like or you 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 start from from the product itself, and the uh, the point with what is like uh, the real time there's there's two i think there's one it's the real time like ana carreras it's uh, also generative artist uh, spanish artist one of the most quoted i think her highest sold artwork was from nine million or something like that uh, she gave a lot to open arms um, also to uh, put it back in uh, in her thing and her artwork 
is just a generative artwork running. The guy who's buying it just pushed the button and this is the frame in this moment. What it's he's unique. buying. It's unique. <coughs> it's unique. And if you're unlucky, it's just black because it's just a moment. <laughs> uh, Yeah. But can you find the whole piece? This artist, I'm sure the artist is the owner and can say, hey, you know what, for 50 million, take it all. Hear my right. You know, it's about your right. It's like the photo. You, you don't buy the photo. How is the photo? You can buy the photo, the paper printed, one by one, edition again, or you have the photo in digital and say, okay, I sell you the rights. I want to do a festival poster with it, 5,000, all the city. I want international campaign for 25 countries in all supermarkets. Yeah, what do you pay? You pay in relation of the use. But the photo is from the, when, will always be from the photographer. It's, you can buy the replication, you can buy the rights, the using rights, but you cannot take the right of, you cannot take the name of the artist of the artwork. That's, it's, it's, it's a bit similar, I think, with, with this point. And it's the same, you can lo look at the photo, <coughs> maybe it's printed in, in, in the newspaper, uh, and maybe it's, it's collected by somebody, but it will be always, uh, and this is also, peop you can patent also ideas. Uh, when I studied, they said of something really, uh, really interesting, which is valid. Everybody and every every creator should know that. If you have an idea, even if it's a technical idea, if it's a uh, design idea, you should draw it on a big paper with all the descriptions and fold it and put a post stamp and bring it to the post office. And then it, and send it to yourself, because then you have a stamp with a date, with, and then we're talking about provenance. So you can show it was my idea at this date, and this is the original date because you have the stamp on the same paper. I mean that goes to the same for blockchain is one of the biggest issues. Like a lot of what was discussed early on when I started entering the field was the, the provenance. So yeah. when you mint. You're saying at that moment as an artist, this thing I just created is done now, I, and I did it. And it's impossible to, on the blockchain, it's impossible to change that, again, as we described before. So that is a good, good provenance. It's, it's like the post stamp. You yeah. cannot manipulate. It's yeah. this day always. The law recognizes it. And it's, it's, it's lawful. So if you have any person coming with the same idea and you come with your paper sent to yourself, you did not pay, you did not register, nobody saw it, it's your private idea, you can say you stole it or you are the second and the first. So this is the provenance, I think this is also a really, really important yes. thing in, yeah. in, in blockchain. And, and for the art in on blockchain, without this... Uh, you could I, even have an art no, piece exactly. that says, that says I deliberately didn't mint this in the blockchain because I didn't want it to be provenance on the blockchain. <laughs> it's just a concept. That is a concept in of itself. And then the, her gallery could say, with her contract, could say her, her certificate of authenticity, authenticity you can mail it to back to each other. This is, the, this is the artwork. Just the denial of blockchain is an artwork in itself, like as a statement in itself. I mean, for me personally, like the moment, like, Duchamp made a toilet bowl, the, it, the, for me personally, it's wide open. Like the doors are open, like any, anything, if you, whatever you, it's all about intent, what your intention is. To me, to me that's, that easy, without the blockchain, that's true. For me personally, you know, it's open, open. It's a, I'm not saying that all of it is a valid, and if I come in here and take a dump, walk out, that's not, doesn't mean it's artwork. It might be just a crazy person that should lock me up, right? But, but, uh, but the intention and, and how you, Focus your energy and what your you know what your story is is very important to all of that. So, so even with the blockchain, out block blockchain, that and also the, the 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 original in the real artwork can also 
we know Dali did a lot of, uh, he signed in, in, in white when he was dying, you know, to, <laughs> to be, pre pre yeah, it's a fact we know. And uh, many artists did it also. So we have also this ambiguous tea. Yeah, you can have another who has the same image minted, but you don't do it. If you do the art world, or the world is small also. So you don't want to burn your name as an artist uh, selling for, you know, uh, five peanuts, making it now. Unless that's your concept. Unless that's your concept. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, we have still good, good people like Damien Hirst or Jeff Koons doing a lot of money with this yes. concept of others. Good people. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, so I, I think we are, we are signing to, I don't know, uh, the letter. No. No. No, I try, I try, I try not to be technical. Yes. Yes, I mean, for, for the things we covered today, and, and we could do like one of them could just be a whole day workshop. You know, I'm inviting people to come. They, you know, like a proper, a proper to me, a proper workshop is like people come in, they create a wallet, they have an artwork, they mint it, they put it online. We we cast it, you know, and like tell them we're doing a workshop, you know. So it's it's a lot for a very. Then we buy it one from. Then each we other. buy it from each other, you know. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely right. No, that's how you do it. See. Well done. Congratulations. 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 No. Spanish. Não, não, não. Nós pedimos aqui um bocado de tempo, isto é um bocado denso, e eu estou a ver a todos já há Agora, esta última parte, não é assim, é mais um bom trabalho do, e do Nick, não é? Que, que no fundo somos os, os últimos a entrar em todo este. E nós olhamos um bocadinho por curiosidade e por. Hum? Eu estou muito interessada em todo este ah. tema, como é que os smart contracts podem casar com o tema da arte digital e da arte degenerativa, ou seja, eu não sou artista, portanto, não tenho a minha mão, quero... Tu querias explorar ainda, mas eu acho que a ideia hoje é um pouco para termos aqui... Porque o que é que foram as minhas referências, não é? Porque eu tive a sorte de os conhecer a eles e um pouco acabaram por me ajudar a esclarecer uma série de dúvidas que acho que depois de quem está a começar todos estes conceitos, são tantos, tantos conceitos ao mesmo tempo que eu acho que espero que menos que depois de hoje uh, vocês tenham ficado com uma ideia um pouco mais clara de como começar e por onde começar e, 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 e tem aqui o, o William que pode enviar dúvidas que ele vai estar super contente aliás ele vai, ele vai, estar, vai estar até domingo assim que podem se acompanhar em uma esquina qualquer e ah, fazer lista de perguntas deita <risos> E pronto, não é? Ou seja, eu acho que eu quero vos agradecer imenso a todos que tenham vindo e quero agora entrar a vossa vez também, não? Por todo, não? Quando vai ser possível isto, não? Não, não, não. Quero agradecer a vós. Obrigado. Obrigado. Obrigado.